So I'm gonna go back up on the steeple. I don't know if you can see, but there's a light bulb up on top of it. And last night I drove up here and it was lit. It tells me the wiring to power the cross is still good, even though the insulation on it is pretty rotted out. So I've got some liquid insulation with me. I'm going to separate those wires out and coat them down real good with that. And then later I'll go looking for a waterproof receptacle to put over all of that. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the top of that with Pour 15 where the old rusted out cross mount is. Try to leave it in there because I'm afraid that pulling it up would do more damage to what's there, the wood and everything, than leaving it. So I'm going to try to encase all the rust in that Pour 15. Put a layer of rubber over that and then put my new metal on top of the rubber. It'll give a little insulation value when the wind blows the cross around up there too. I'll uh, put the camera down and we'll go up the building. I say put the camera down, I'm going to put it right here. If I, if I fall off. All right, mission accomplished. What I did there is, I believe what happened here is that one time they built that steeple out of wood and it had a flat top on it and a cross attached to it. And then later they came along and put the siding on it. Uh, the wood is pretty sturdy looking and part of the old rusted out metal from the old cross is kind of in there and attached to it but there's enough clear spot there for me to attach to the original wood. I believe it's strong enough to hold it. The pieces of the angle iron on either side actually probably make it a little stronger. So rather than take it out, I took 415 and I just soaked all that top wood, the uh, angle iron and everything with that. Um, I remember a story I was talking to a guy once who was very familiar with boats and he was talking about a guy who built a transom for his boat using plywood and 415. He just kept laying it on there and soaking it down and talking about how strong 415 was. But I believe the 415 shouldn't be exposed to sunlight and it won't once we're finished. But I believe the 415 will neutralize the rust on what's already there and I'm gonna lay, uh, I'm gonna put a sealer on top of what's already there. And then I'm gonna put a rubber mat on top of that. And then I'm gonna put my new cross mount on top of that and bolt that down through the rubber mat into the wood. So it's gonna go in stages. I also insulated the wires that are sticking up. And they're not very big. You can see them, they look like they're about two or three inches long. That's all we got. But I insulated everything down to where it disappears into the building. And it's kind of like I told the preacher, you know, I don't know what it looks like inside the building, but it makes sense to me that the part that's outside is going to get more, is going to get sun damage and cause that rubber to deteriorate. It may be okay inside, I can't tell. You might want to have somebody look at that. But And the other thing too is where it's going to be outside the cross, if they want to come back and rewire it later, I'm going to set it up. I'm going to put a waterproof plug receptacle up there. And that's where the cross has a plug in, you just plug it in. Now, if they want to take the cross down and change the bulbs, they can just unplug it, pull the pin. I don't know if I've explained my pull the pin cross removal setup yet or not, but I'm going to start talking now. Go back home, wash my brush, go to the hardware store, and uh, see what kind of waterproof electrical receptacle, receptacle, <laughs> receptacle thingies.
may run back home and get Charlie because he loves to ride. I didn't bring him here. But, uh, I'll go back home and wash that brush. picture up there with my cell phone. Oh well, we'll get one later. I got a picture the other day of it. I got a picture 